What's good, everybody? My name is Simon Szalinski, and today we're going to talk about creative strategy and diet response in 2024. I have the honor to talk on Carl Weiss's channel about all that because this presentation was part of the May Man Dubai event, but we decided to keep some of the things and some of the stuff that I showed in there private and exclusive to the people who attended. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure to join next time. Problem with most of the brands is that they have like a four week ads turnaround. They just copy competitor scripts and say something like, oh, UGC doesn't work for me, which is bullshit. And after that, you're going to be one of the main men and have a 48 hour creative turnaround. You can test up to 100 creatives a week and you will know how to execute UGC in 2024. So. I will show you our eight-figure creative workflow and our framework step-by-step. Step. I will also showcase a live example with our most recent case study, which was a suitcase brand. And why do I think I know anything about it? So my name is Simon Szalinski and I'm the CEO of SMN Scale. We are a creative agency that has been working behind the scenes of some of the biggest growing D2C brands worldwide, including Coconut, Kinobody, More Money, More Love, you name it. And our econ portfolio did 300 million in revenue last year with around 40 million in ad spend. So the problem with uh, most of the brands are that 95% of econ people look for great working money printing ads to copy and they expect to win because beginner guides basically preach it. And the even deeper problem is that success and matter can be pretty random and sometimes the shiny brands are maybe just lucky and you can't just copy winners and expect eight figure ads. So with our suitcase case study, um, the product was a premium looking suitcase like Remover, but for only 25% of the price. Uh, USPs are like they had a cup holder, phone charger, a phone holder, some security logs, front pocket for essentials. They had a super huge potential because they were first to market, but they didn't generate any revenue at all yet. So the creative problem we had was that we researched uh, that the research only gave us competitors who have completely different angles and also different products. They were focusing on practicability and smart organizing of clothes, all that. So our solution was that we had to deeply understand the minds and the emotions of our customers. We had to install the desires we found into proven ad frameworks that have produced millions of revenue. I will also showcase some of them later. And most important, you need to test a shit ton of ads that are backed by psychology and telehypnotizing story. The real winners understand the market's psychology first, then test different hypnotizing stories to, t to different audiences, and one of them will hit the nail on the head. So for this suitcase client, this step was necessary because there were basically no competitors to steal from. And with our advanced research methods, that was a great success. So there are two types of strategies for creators. At first, the broker strategy. The broker gets excited by seeing competitors' brands winning, so he copies them, and fails. He thinks like a founder with empty pockets and not like a customer with a problem. He misses the peak of the market and wins some of the leftover over and aware customers when a trend is ending, if he's lucky. So the result is that he tries to compete with the sharks and loses. The second approach would be the Giga Chat strategy. He sees the real problem of his prospects and how competitors present the solution via ads. He will question competitors what audiences and desires are the others missing out. And he does the research like he himself would die if he couldn't solve his problem with a product. He knows direct response copywriting and he takes action then and bangs out minimum 15 new ads every week. He can use AI to accelerate to 100 weekly ads and more. He separately targets completely driven audiences and gets idealized by the brokey. So to become a GigaChat, you need to work like one. So this is a structured workflow to make banger GigaChat ads, starting with the hypnotic research means the organic research. So starting with the hypnotic research means the organic research. Did you ever notice that scrolling on TikTok is maybe more hypnotic than scrolling in ads? That's because you need to think like your customer first. You're going to search on YouTube, Reddit, TikTok, forums, blogs, where individuals within a specific niche or bubble share their opinions. Identify polarizing forums and YouTube channels that serve as community hubs. So for the suitcase client, for example, we watch travel blogs, young ecstatic, stylish people documenting their journeys on TikTok, YouTube, etc. What we noticed is that almost all of them were brokies traveling on a budget and had ugly old fabric suitcases. So also really important in the research is the value of Karens. 
because they pay special attention to comment sections and Amazon reviews where passionate inv individuals often overshare detailed stories about products and issues providing rich insights. As you can see right here, I'm not going to, to read all that, but you will know that they were just like basically like overshare like crazy. And what we're also going to do is aggregate content for analysis. It means we consume blogs, comments, YouTube video transcripts uh, with using the transcript feature. And we can use these as an input for brainstorming or for ChatGPT to extract all the insights in there. YouTube research is also a big lever because creators sum up knowledge from blogs and have an opinion. So we can input related topics and filters results by views, analyze the style of the thumbnails and headlines, and of course also the visuals. So what you're going to do is document 10 headlines from the top performing short and long form videos. Um, you really need to watch one or two long form videos for the context. And you're going to also select five videos, copy their transcript and feed them into ChatGPT with research prompts. You're also trying to find and note oversharing comments with high engagement from five videos for deeper analysis. So example, it was a big, big thing for the traveling community to bash the big luxury suitcase brand for their prices. And organic content with those claims and headlines and hooks seem to work and polarize. For example, we have like YouTube short over here, which had like a sub, sub line or headline, uh, do, not buy, do not buy removal suitcases. Or like for example, removal original, uh, was a travel light, uh, 100 bucks for, for a suitcase. And now you have the data for the next step. You can dive deep and write down the marketing fundamentals in a sheet. For example, this is our onboarding sheet that every customer fills out, supported by Lucas and me. Lucas is our like great strategy mastermind within our agency. And we optimized an explanation document with it. So make sure to fill those documents out. This will help you a lot with just like basically understanding what you're going to test next and where you are at the market right now so fill this out try to keep the information in your mind to implement in this type of workflow step two the strategy our first approach would be fast track ads so whenever there's a big need for launching ads asap you're going to do those here we twist the quick workflow approach from the broke strategy to our benefit because we basically just do better that can already skyrocket brands because we have all the superior information from the research and onboarding sheets. So our goal is to rapidly roll out new ads to grab traction and gather early data. Action steps for that would be to swipe ideas from competitors, look into our sheets, tweak them and create your own superior content. Use simple frameworks like before and after, pain negative itself. The important point is to not create everything from scratch. Rewrite other brands' ad with your ideas and try to do them better. Iterate from feedback, use customer service to refine ads and apply for insights for immediate improvement. Fast track means quick launch, smart borrowing, rapid improvement. This will bring short-term results and not too much of long-term results. This may be a shiny object syndrome and only works initially. At this point, founders think they figured out something magic and feel superior, but are truthfully only at the beginning. They get winning ads, but maybe still too random without understanding the market at all. So the result is that the ads may scale brutally in no time, but also burn out quickly. And because of that, we continue with the second approach, our evergreen frameworks. You're going to use the insights and learnings from the fast track ads together with your deep research and implement them in evergreen frameworks. And no, UGC isn't dead in 2024. You may just not understand your audience and sophistication stage. Um, right here, you're going to have our top three performing UGC frameworks. This is just a brief of what you got at the Maidman event in person. Um, but I also decided to showcase three of them for you. Um, yeah, as you can see right here, we have a unique mechanis mechanism framework. You have a pain agate itself type of framework, and we have one of the education frameworks. All right. Um, the second thing would be TikTok frameworks, uh, because a younger audience are more likely to engage with this type of content, um, because the content maybe appears a bit more organic. It's easy, entertaining, and it's simple to digest videos because we always want to hide our attack and not make ads look like ads. So example for those would be like a three reasons why, what I order, what I got, my new everyday product, you name it. This is basically uh, overlooked by so many brands right now because everyone is just like focusing too much on, oh, what's next? I need to do like better things than that, which is bullshit if you don't nail it within your copywriting. So really make sure 
to understand your market, understand your audience, and try to implement them in those type of frameworks, and you will see that they will still work in 2024. Next up, we would have the MPC frameworks. These are more likely to crush on older audiences. This is more like a testimonial ad concept where you have like an older looking person just in front of the camera, basically like how I'm sitting here right now, and just like talk straight into the camera. Um, introduce the product with every USB, have it a bit educational with like a personal story or something. And yeah, for example, like oh, this problem, this is how I solved it. That's super simple, testimonial-like content. It can work on its own very, very good, but it could also work like combined with your UGC ads and also your direct response ads, which we're going to talk about next, um, to put in like social proof for your ads. So now we are going to talk about the, I think, most important part, which is direct response. This is a strategy focused on extracting immediate action from the audience. So for that, please know what awareness stage is and the market sophistication is. For that, just read Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz and you will basically like understand what I'm going to talk about. But this is like a fundamental knowledge that you need to crush it. The formats we use in our case are VSLs and advertorials. Um, we always try to combine that with some sort of hero figure that is like a authoritative figure in advertising, such as educators for children's products or like a doctor for health products. And it can increase credibility and connection with the audience like crazy. This fits like for products like supplements, skincare, orthopedic products, weight loss products, and mass market items. It's a bit hard to do those on like lifestyle brands like clothing or something, but you can like definitely like give that a try to combine the principles that we are talking about in mostly everything. But for that, as I said, you really need to understand your market. So the achievable outcome and adventure with that is... If you make a 40-minute ad, hypnotizing and use the right psychology principles, you can shift beliefs. That means transforming completely unaware customers into loyal and completely convinced brand hooligans. You need to overcome your fear for that because longer ads, like 10-minute long ads, can perform well on platforms like Facebook, using successful examples to dispel these fears. If your ad is interesting and intruding and tells a story. So... Don't be scared to test a long form ad. Even though it's maybe not what your competitors are doing, try to be like the first mover for that and try to crush it with that because you can pretty much feed the whole top of funnel with unaware customers with these type of videos and have like a whole new audience. Yeah, get your product basically. So the whole direct response thing can be adopted in the fast track or UGC style. Even with a rapid deployment model and UGC ads, you can incorporate fundamental direct response strategies and can lead them to a significant success. Example for that would be like a product aware type of framework where you're going to have a hook where we showcase the product, try to polarize with um, like a us versus them almost where we say like, hey, the problem with other brands is that you're going to add like a before and after, maybe like a personal story with a testimonial, um, Try to do those as authentic as possible. Again, try to do that in that sort of NPC style. You can insert a how-to or like a step-by-step -step guide on how it's used, how you, how the product will be. Um, you're then also going to add like some sort of facts or interesting stat or study that comes with that. And after that, you're going to showcase the result, have a summary, add another social proof and form like a testimonial and have a call to action in there. But with that, be always aware with health claims, of course, we don't want to sell bullshit. We don't want to oversell something which just doesn't solve a problem. So always take care about that because it can lead to legal action, which you just don't want to do. Next up, copywriting. For that, we are going to brainstorm and dump all of our ideas into a Google document. We then write down raw idea cards with very different angles. Like for the suitcase, for example, um, we're going to target like business people traveling a lot. We're going to have train journeys because it's just a big thing in Germany. Um, where you should buy a thousand dollar suitcase, the beginner's travel guide, a stewardess authority type of angle, maybe like a traveling in your early 20s on a budget thing. And yeah, the structure for that would be to have three potential hooks for each idea um, you're going to describe the story in three to five sentences in the same style and with all the details that should be also in the final ad 
going to present the product with its relevant USPs. You're going to add trust elements and social proof like press, articles, references, guarantees, and positive reviews. Um, and then, of course, your call to action to motivate and test and possibly uh, purchase the product. You're going to then write your first draft of scripts. So you pick an ad framework, like for example, one of the three I was showing to you, and also choose your positioning audiences and awareness stage. You can then write down your scripts and format them, or you can save them and feed them into ChatGPT to get everything in place. Of course, don't let ChatGPT write your whole script because it would just like put out super crazy bullshit. Um, but for the first draft, you can always like try to get some inspiration on what an AI would do. After that, you're going to have a strategic rewrite. So you switch the body parts and hooks, switch maybe the whole framework even, and do a bit more research on YouTube for play at the ad, ad library again and again, and be aware of the market sophistication because it can develop rapidly. To finalize that, you can improve the readability, you can enhance the entertainment value, you need to ensure that everything is coherent and flows well when read, and also your causality and order. Um, you're going to ask yourself some questions like, is it logical? Are there any abrupt breaks? Um, try to explain it to people like as you were a toddler. Read the scripts and as you read the scripts as you've never heard of the topic before, does it make sense? If yes, good. If not, simplify it. Ask yourself toddler like questions uh, with each sentence. Why? Okay, and how? And where? Like a chart would and explain it within the copy. Next up, content sourcing. It's super important, but always keep in mind that usually you get what you pay for. So don't try to be cheap with that because the creator can make or break your whole ad and your whole ad account basically. Um, try to use your audience as creators mainly. So if you sell like a product and the avatar is like a 50 plus year old woman, try to have like a 50 plus year old UGC creator or like actor within your ads. But you can also split test that with like the opposite. So if you showcase like a 18 year old girl, for example, maybe the 50 plus year old girl will feel like, oh, I need that so I can feel young again, etc. Um, just try to what works best for you, but usually just try to represent your audience. You can try to get like free content with barter deals. Then I would suggest to only get them like B-roll briefings and not make them talk into the camera because you can recycle it way better. Because with that, you can basically like, recycle the content and test out way more concepts uh, without like booking new creators every other week. So make sure to get a good amount of content that you can basically like you reuse every time. Next up, editing. So for that, we always want to hide our attack, which means people buy from people they know, like, and trust. So we take this seriously and want to make the ads look as organic as possible. Um, so make sure to look at organic content your audience knows, likes, and trusts, and then duplicate this style. So action steps for that would be to browse the organic content on TikTok and YouTube and filter by most viewed, uh, look at the hooks, look at the headlines, and look how the editing was done in general. For example, this is a product for, for example, product for younger target groups like a fitness food brand. You can either make the content look like some female influencer is reviewing the food or presence of six fat burning life hacks or a new food meal prep routine or like a, what do you eat in a day um, on the one hand or like on the other hand, you can get a May Jack guy who's sharing Schwarzenegger's nutrition secret for max performance and muscle growth. This always depends on who you are selling to. So don't do a lot of selfie mode talking head footage except for the NPC style of testimonial content. Don't try to do like scammy ad UGC ways like, oh, the brand sent me their products and they are so good for the environment. Nobody, nobody wants to hear that basically. And those ads are totally missed the point of what UGC ads are about to make it look like organic user generated content from people your audience knows, likes and trusts. So for analyze and iteration, there are two ways of how we iterate ads. There's a way of editing iteration so we just look at the performance metrics um, for example the hook rate which you want to have like over 30 percent um, you have the formula for that over here and if the hook is lower than that just make sure to have like a better visual for example or the hold rate we want to have that over 15 percent if it's below that just make sure everything is visual appealing maybe try to short the ad and see where they drop off and then like yeah correct that uh, for the click-through rate you, we want to have that 
uh, over 1%. Uh, if it's below that, your call to action is maybe not that good or like the storyline doesn't add up too well. So make sure to have everything in place again and check your script. And also like spend by demographics. We also want to see that to just like see who we are selling to, what is the age and what uh, gender. Second way to iterate your ads would be a strategic rewrite again. As I talked before in the copywriting section, try to fix your framework, try to fix your desires, try to fix your audience, um, test different audiences and make the, attract make the ad attractive to different people, highlight different USPs to different desires because Peter Kai once said 99% of the time your ad is not working, it just fucking sucks and he is absolutely right with that. So make sure to pull your learnings from ads that didn't work and try to make them better or also like from ads that are working well, try to get your learnings from that and reproduce them into like more banger ads. And when you're done with that, you can basically start again from the beginning. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed it well. Um, the Google document is linked in the comment section. So if you have any more questions, just write a comment, let Carl and me know. Maybe we can also do like a second video where we have like a conversation, do a Q&A about creators in total. Just put all that down in the comment section. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe, you know all that. And it was a pleasure to talk and have my first YouTube video over here. So super thankful and have a good one, everyone.